All right, you ready for this? This is gonna be the best piece of financial advice that you're probably not gonna take. Don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's just something I've noticed in my own life uh, and certainly in my own readings. There's not many financial help books that don't mention this. Um, if you're at the bottom end of the socioeconomic scale, you know, you're not making a lot of money, this doesn't apply to you because you're spending everything you've got on uh, every last penny on staying alive. And you know, if you're Bill Gates, doesn't apply to you either because you know he doesn't need financial advice, obviously. Um, but for the vast majority of us in the middle, especially us Americans, um, I think this applies to a heck of a lot of us. You ready? Here it comes. Live within your means. Sounds simple, and you're not going to do it. Nobody does. But I'm going to. But I have to say it to you anyway, simply because most people live right at, they spend everything they make or more, you know, I mean, people earn $30,000 and it's or 40 or 50 or whatever the number is. And then they go out and they get credit cards and they get in debt because, you know, they need to earn more. And it is so much easier. Life is so much better. You have no idea. And I'll give examples of it in a minute. When you don't have that pressure of, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you make, if you're earning $15,000 or 50 or 100 or 150, if you've spent it all, you have that pressure of every night in the middle of the night waking up going, oh shit, I got these, oh my language, oh my God, so bad, so bad. Uh, you know, but you're thinking, I've got these credit card bills and I've got this, how am I going to pay that? No, I want to go on this trip and I want to do that. And, ah, and it keeps you up at night and you feel it in your stomach. And you know, believe me, I know, I mean, I'm, Freaking 49 years old, and I've lived this for 47 years of my life. Well, okay, I didn't get it when I was a little kid, but, you know, most of my adult life, really until just the last year or two. And I've been lucky enough uh, to have a change in my business where I was able to cut down on my expenses but keep my revenue. And, you know, the knee-jerk reaction was, woohoo, bigger car, and look, I can move out of this house I've lived in for 20 years, and and uh you know all that and i probably will do some of those things but i'm really glad now in retrospect i looked at my life and i said well, i got this credit card debt and i got these taxes and i got this i owe and you know and despite the fact that i've been a financial planner for 20 years i don't have that much in savings and i took care of all those things and oh life is just completely different in every way shape or form the first time in my life that i saw this it's the best example i can get when i was in college I had a roommate who, his roommate from the year before, won $7,500 in the lottery. And um, he went and spent $7,470. I'm not kidding. He had $30 left from his lottery win. He went and spent that on a stereo. It was a freaking awesome stereo. It was cool because he would go on vacation. You know, he'd go for spring break or, uh, you know, Christmas break. And I lived uh, on the, or across the street from the campus in apartments and he didn't want to leave it in his dorm room, you know, for a week when nobody was there. He was afraid someone was going to kick down his door and take his $7,000 stereo, his 70, you know, $7,500 stereo. So he'd leave it with us. And the moment he walked out of the door, we'd pop it out of the box and set it up. And for a week we'd had Bose sound system. I mean, it was those little one inch cube type of things that just filled the room. It was amazing. But the funny thing is this guy had a great stereo and my roommate would say, Hey, let's go to lunch. And he couldn't. He couldn't go to lunch because he had his food plan, you know, and he couldn't afford to buy lunch anywhere. I mean, they're like, let's go to a fast food place and, you know, let's go to Carl's Jr. Let's spend a buck on lunch or three bucks on lunch. And he couldn't do it because he had spent every last dime on that freaking stereo. When you can't afford lunch and you make, you know, you get a windfall of 7,500 bucks, don't spend it all on a stereo. It's just stupid. But we're, we're taught to be such consumers. I mean, we, we live in a capitalist, you know, consumerist style or, or country. And we've been trained our whole life. Spend everything, you know, new shoes, new car, new TV. Oh, look, they have, you know, 4D, 8 gigahertz, you know, whatever the hell the ratings are these days. And we spend it all, and yet we can't sleep at night because we got these bills hanging over us. And we've got... Um, you know, we're worried about, oh, how am I going to send the kids to college or how am I going to do this or how am I going to do that? And yet as soon as we make any more money in our life, we spend it all on stuff. I had a friend, in, in the only job I ever worked, job job out of college, um, working for someone else. Um, he got a $2,000 raise. It wasn't $2,000 a month. It was $2,000 a year. So, you know, $150, $160 a month um, increase. 
And it was funny because I talked to him a couple weeks later and he says, oh, I bought a new computer. Um, you know, and this was back in 1990. And, uh, you know, computers, you buy a computer back then, they were all 2000 bucks. I was like, okay, well, you just spent your annual raise. Um, you know, two weeks in, and um, yeah, I'm just thinking that to myself, and then a few weeks later, he says, oh, I got a new car, because I got this, you know, I got, I got that raise, and, and I'm thinking to myself, you're in worse financial shape than you were, because you went, you know, you upgraded your car, now maybe he needed a new car, and maybe he needed a computer, I don't know, but what I do know is two months later, we were having lunch one time, and he's looking at me, and he goes, shit, I'm out of money, and I'm like, of course you are, you spent three times more than your raise was, um, and it's just, don't. It, and it's so easy to say, uh, save on the small stuff. I know what I'm about to say is going to sound completely contradictory to this whole, you know, concept of this, of what I'm talking about here. But I'm going to say this anyway. I don't, I'm not a big fan of trying to save money, you know, not going to a movie and not going to a Starbucks and things like that. I mean, if you're drinking two or three Starbucks a day and it adds up, yeah, that stuff adds up. But I, I, I'm not a fan of saving your way to wealth, and having said that, I'm not a fan of overspending because when you take that pressure off yourself, it's huge. And I know those two things seem contradictory, but here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Do whatever you can to get your spending under your, your income and keep it there and have it there by a lot. Um, it just changes your life. It really does. Take my word for it. I, 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 I so convinced that we're stuck in this weird society um, where all we do is spend, 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 and we're on a, a, a the treadmill. I mean, you, you know, that cliche statement has been around, but I really do feel like we're on a treadmill. And it stress and debt and buying things. Just, just, just remember this. And no one who watches this video is actually going to do it. That's the frustrating thing. But just keep it in the back of your mind. You know, do you need to live on the beach? Or can you live a few miles inland? You know, I live in Southern California. The difference between on the beach and just a few miles inland and 20, 20 miles inland is huge. And sometimes, you know, save that 50,000 bucks. Are you kidding? Um, you know, do you need the big Lexus? Are you okay with the small Lexus? Are you okay with, uh, you know, a Honda? <laughs> you know, along those lines as well. Um, I made that change. It's funny, I just came up with that off the top of my head, but I made that change a few years ago. I had, I had the big Lexus, and I went down to the small Lexus. And I like the Lexus. I can't have a car that breaks down, you know, with my disability. I can't be walking along the side of the freeway with a broke after a broken down car, but I didn't need the big one. And, you know, that saved me $180 a month in, um, you know, in car payments. That was a huge difference in my life. I did that when the economic downturn was happening and my business was going down by 20%. So that saved my butt. Um, but just think about those things. Try to spend less than you earn. Sounds basic, and yet no one does it. Anyway, I'm just making this stuff off the top, up off the top of my head. So, sorry. Yeah, thanks for listening to me ramble. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Bye.